Mithridates is mainly known for his war against the Romans, and as we all know, he goes three rounds with them and in the end proves to be one, if not the most deadly enemy of Rome. Mithridates had other wars though, not just the wars against the Romans. And in this video, we will cover Mithridates' wars of expansion. First, Mithridates needed an army. The army his father had basically was non-existent due to his mother not caring about it. He started out by recruiting 6,000 Hublites, a small force but a strong one. After this, he began his expansion by taking Trapezos, a very rich coastal town that would later prove to be not only a money maker but a great base of operations. Now we set out after Colchis. However, this proved to be extremely difficult, as the Colchians were brave and tough fighters, but in the end, Mithridates' armies took Colchis. The most important town in this area was Phasis, another port city, that, once again, would prove to be very, very useful. He also started bringing the peoples he conquered into his army. So after he took Colchis, he probably had around 10 to 15,000 troops under his command. This may seem like a lot for how small Pontus was, but you have to keep in mind that Pontus was extremely rich, so it's not impossible that this army was big. After a few years of not much happening, a messenger arrives in the court of Mithridates. The messenger explains to Mithridates that the Greeks north of Pontus want to be liberated from the Scythians. Mithridates was elated. Of course he would go help, quote unquote, help the Greeks. The Greeks in the Bosphorus had been under threat since they started colonizing that area. The Scythians would always raid their territory and force them to pay tribute. The Greeks tried again and again, but always seemed to fail to get freedom from the Scythians. This all changed when Mithridates sent Neoptolemus and Diophansus to conquer the Scythians. Not much is known about the war, however, we can piece together this. Neoptolemus was Mithridates' admiral, and would have ferried the troops over to the Bosphorus. Diophantus seems to have had around 10,000 troops. Now, as we all know, some of the best commanders in history failed to subdue the Scythians. But it seems that Diophantus got lucky. The Scythian kings got together around 50,000 soldiers. Now we can all agree that this is way over exaggerated. The Scythians have never had an army so big, so why would they be able to bring forth 50,000 soldiers? Even if the Scythians had allies, the army would have been more like 10 to 20,000. Even then, that might be a bit high. But nonetheless, the campaign started with a major Scythian defeat. Diophantus marched deeper into Scythia, while Neoptolemus patrolled the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. Most of the tribes at this point around the Sea of Azov came over to Mithridates' side after the defeat. Now we can imagine just how hard this campaign would have been. As we all know, great kings have failed to subdue the Scythians, let alone make them their subjects. So the Scythian campaign would have been grueling. But in the end, they were defeated. Mithridates called back his generals and army to Pontus. The Scythians were not happy with anyone being anyone's subject. So they rebelled. Mithridates sent back his generals, and once again they took over Scythia. To support the armies, Mithridates married a few of his daughters to the Scythian kings. Back in Asia Minor, Mithridates was looking to take Armenia Minor. To take this territory, he married his daughter Cleopatra to the Armenian king, Tigranes the Great. Tigranes the Great didn't see much importance into holding this, or even arguing over Armenia Minor. However, Mithridates saw something that Tigranes didn't, and we will get into that in a different video. Now Mithridates took the town of Albia, near the Crimea and west of the Sea of Azov, and when he took it, he built a fortress next to it. Eventually, he went to the western shore of the Black Sea. In any world, anyone can agree that fighting the tribes would have been a horrible idea. The Sarmatians, the Dacians, the Maoetians, 
the Thracians, Torians, and Bastarnae were all fierce tribes. So Mithridates used his amazing diplomacy and cunning skills to win the tribes over to his side. However, not all of the tribes went over to Mithridates. The Roxolani and the Bastarnae attempted to fight. After some fighting, they were subdued, and a fortress was built near their territory. With that, Mithridates owned almost all of the Black Sea, except for a small part near the Caucasus. There is some evidence of fighting on the Danube River, but other than that, Mithridates' conquest of the tribes around the Black Sea was finished. Sadly, there isn't a lot of any source to go off of. There really hasn't been any recorded battles of these campaigns. I have done my best to bring together what I could of Pontus's wars of expansion. It is very difficult to figure or even piece together anything in this time period. No Nonetheless, I did enjoy making this video, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.